Welcome to the stream, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Can you guys please put a one in the chat if you guys can hear me okay? What's up, Sophia? What's up, Frank? What's up, just KJ? George? Arctic Fox? Sleuth Mom? Copper Horse? Casey? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let's see, Lip Lock No More, thank you so much, uh, what's up Kim, we got everybody, I saw someone, uh, Chihuahua Dawson, I like that name, uh, Serial Killer, nice, what's up, what's up Jill, I got a lot, I got a lot of people in, wow, I usually don't, uh, do lives this early, but, um, there's been some, uh, a little bit of information that came out this morning, so I thought I'd go over. What's up, Sunshine? What's up, Aunt Denny? Uh, I think I've got everybody. Uh, what's up, Lynn? I think I've got everybody. Awesome. All right. Let's, uh, before we start the show, while well, everybody's still kind of coming in, so if you're, uh, what's up, Leanne Lake? So if you guys are newer to my channel, um, one of the things I do on my channel is I go over big cases, unsolved cases, like the Delphi case, um, JonBenet Ramsey, and then uh, I like to feature a missing persons poster into my videos, and that's kind of a way to give back to the community. And, oh, thank you so much, Leon. And, um, yeah, so uh, today we've got, uh, let's see, her name is Leah Brandon. And she was last seen uh, nine, ten days ago on January 30th. Uh, she is 17 years old, brown eyes, long brown hair, uh, has a scar on her chin. And let's see, where is she missing from? That does not say. That does not help. I will have to go back. Um, oh, wow. Oh, it says contact the Loling PD. Anybody know where Loling is or recognize that? Uh, the 830 area code. Um, usually they have the, the state and the city, but for some reason it does not. If you can, anybody recognize that uh, area code? If not, I'll I'll look it up. Oh, oh, let me go back. I think I got another picture. So this is uh, another picture. It looks like she's a nurse. Is that Texas? Okay, thank you guys so much. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, Texas. That's right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. So yeah, she went missing about 10 days ago. Thank you, George. Thank you, Lynn, for... Helping me out on that. Okay. All right. Let me check my notes here. Okay. So let's get into the information I got this morning. Uh, says Central Alabama. I think I think it is Texas. Uh, Aunt Denny. Now that I remember. I can, uh, I can always double check here. Went hurt to double check, but I'm pretty sure it is Texas. Let's just take a quick look. Uh, yeah, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas. Yeah, so, uh, yep, Texas. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, I got this message this morning. So, I kind of knew about this information. Uh, not the... The news but I knew um, about this uh, this incident so Barbara McDonald she is the producer of down the hill podcast um, I'm sure many of you if you follow Delphi case have heard of that podcast very interesting it's got some very good stuff in it and Barbara apparently had done an interview with Keegan Klein and this was way back uh, when they first looked at him in 2017. And apparently, uh, it's still kind of rumored, but I believe there is, uh, like she did a phone interview with him. 
And so this came out this morning on Reddit, and people have been asking her because they've been kind of knowing that she had had this interview, but she couldn't um, she couldn't use it because of uh, law enforcement said she couldn't take it, couldn't use it. But apparently, she just posted that. Um, so it says actually airs Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and again at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then replays uh, Monday night. I guess repairs Monday night. I guess replay Monday night is what she meant to say. And it says there is new information as well as a new interview people have been wanting to see. So that is amazing. I mean, that's exciting. Because we know that the 13th is, I believe, Sunday. And that is the five-year anniversary and it would really be nice to have some um, new information about this case. Um, a lot of people think, uh, you know, a lot of the public wants to help and thinks that, you know, if we had some more information to go off, you know, we could help solve, you know, this case. So I'm just taking a look at the chat here. What's up, holy cats? What's up? Uh, what's up, Aaron? What's up, Ashley Shoemaker? So, this is uh, Keegan Klein. And another little picture of him. So, he was behind the Anthony Schatz account. And they believe, the theory is, one of the th many theories, is that somehow he's connected into a much bigger... At the word this prop word this right. It's kind of, it's so hard when you talk about Keegan Klein when you're on live on YouTube because you kind of have to dance around words. But um, yeah, he was in a pedal. They think that he's involved in kind of like a pedal ring because they know they found a lot of CP, you know, porn um, on a bunch of devices that he had, and they feel like that's a good possibility that someone. Uh, was in contact with the girls via Snapchat or following their account um, since one of the last um, photos of Abby was this was a Snapchat photo and it was a possibility because they had told uh, a bunch of friends that they were going out to this bridge and it's possible that they Someone was following their account and, you know, had been stalking them. And so they think that it's a good possibility that Keegan, not himself is BG, but uh, could have been in contact with BG. It may not even known it was, you know, bridge guy. But so that's that's kind of the main theory. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me pull up the chat here because you guys are kind of, yeah, I forgot to pull up chat here. What's up, George? Hello from Houston. What's up, buddy? Uh, let's see. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go way back down here. Okay. Virginia says, "Thank you, Chris." Out the door. Check it out later. Okay, no problem. Uh, you're welcome, Leanne. Uh, we got a lot. I got a lot of other stuff here to go over. I've also got. Um, I'm gonna go over some of the infamous leaker texts. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but there's a. There's a person that um, I believe started on Reddit, and I know posted on Facebook, and talked about, apparently he's, he just got a lot of info, and he goes by Leaker. And uh, we'll, we'll go over some, because uh, he, what he did is he or she posted on Reddit saying, hey, I know a lot of inside information, um, I'll be back later tonight, put all the main questions you guys have into this, you know, and this is a Reddit forum. And then tonight I'll come back and I'll answer as many questions as I can. And so, and a lot of them are very interesting. So I've got a, I've got a video that's got the screenshots of them that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go over a little bit later in the show here. Uh, let's see. Aaron says there could be more clues that may connect BG to the girls. They count, they count in each other to trade. Yeah, for sure. What's up, Jeff? Uh, hey, everyone. Subbed about a month ago. Uh, 
or so. I really enjoy the channel. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. It means a lot. What's up, Claire? So, all right. Uh, Sleuth Mom, uh, is that your channel link? Yeah, I've been working with Sleuth Mom. She's, uh, she's a great channel. She focuses more on the... Uh, more on the kids that go missing, which is great. Uh, and she does a lot of work. She does. She's very thorough in her investigations and bringing attention to the cases that not a lot of people know about. So please definitely um, check out her channel when you can. I'll uh, post hers in the comments there. So uh, please go and sub to that channel. Great channel. So, um, oh, I see. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine, Sleuth. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> okay. So, let me go back here. So, yeah, so that'll be really exciting. This, uh, let me go back to this. So, yeah, Saturday, 8 p.m., um, I need to figure out, uh, as soon as I know uh, links and stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll put like a post in my community post once I figure out what um, what platform that interview or what, whatever is going to air on Saturday. Once I figure it out, I will definitely uh, put, it in the, put it in a community post or something. So um so yeah so um while i'm here so any donations super chats or anything i take 35 percent of either super chat or a super sticker and 35 percent of that will go to the humane society i think this first time i'm going to do the humane society of utah because that's where i'm from and then um i think maybe every three months we'll, we'll see how the donations come in um and then we'll uh, we'll do like a live show where I, I you know I donate and we'll um, we'll send those donations in together, which would be really cool. And then I think maybe next time I'll do the the National uh, Humane Society next time and maybe kind of go back and forth. We'll see how that works. Um, but yeah, so on my channel to get back, I do you know I help with the missing, and then I figure with uh, I'm a huge animal lover, and so. Um, I figured to get back to the um, Humane Society. and uh, So, yeah. So, right now we're at $42. Uh, it's not a lot, but, you know, it's a start. And, uh, like I said, any donations, 35% uh, will go to that. And I'll have start having, a like, a ticker up there at the top once I go live more uh, of the updated amount. So, I do have Venmo, Jill. I do. Um, it should be in the description. So, what's up, Sherry? Oh, yeah, you're welcome, Cyril. Yeah, like I said, I, I've always wanted to use this platform for good. Um, and that's why I started out with The Missing. And I've been doing that since almost day one, since I started making videos. So, uh, Denny says, I have many, many animals all rescued. So, thank you, Chris. Yeah, I am the same way, at Denny. Most of my animals have been rescued off... Uh, of course, I don't have them right now, but yeah, most of the animals I've had have been rescues, especially cats. I'll take most cats off the streets just because I'm a sucker for them. So, oh, thank you so much, George, for the 1999. That's awesome, buddy. Thank you. That is so awesome. I really appreciate that. Um,. So yeah, we got a lot of fun stuff. Um, I've got some emojis that I need to make, so I thought we could uh, do uh, 42. This is a lot to me. Yeah, at the start. Now we got twenty dollars. Um, I'm not great with math, um, but I would say that's that's another you know um, five bucks. That's twenty five percent. So about seven bucks. Plus, uh, YouTube takes a small percentage, so it yeah, probably about five bucks. So, you know, little by little. So, yeah, that's awesome, George. Thanks so much, buddy. And like I said, we'll do a show. You know, when I I think like maybe every three months, you know, we'll have a couple hundred dollars. We'll we'll do a little show or something. So, all right. So I've got more information for you guys. <laughs> 
I mean, I love math. I, I, I guess I'm fairly good at math. I sucked at English, so. So, let's see. Let me look at my notes here. Okay. So, how many, um, just curious, because we know that there's two sketches. I just, I thought I'd explain these two sketches because a lot of people are confused about the sketches. And I thought I'd kind of, I've explained it once before in my show, but I thought I would explain it one more time because it is just, um, it is. It's very confusing because we have two sketches and yet they told people, so this sketch came out first and then later on, uh, two years later, they released this sketch and then they said, forget about this sketch. But a lot, you still see to, the, to this day, a lot of people still use this sketch. So I thought I'd kind of explain it. Um, and this this information came from uh, well, actually multiple people, but one was a retired detective um, that's kind of had experience with uh, sketches. And so what it was is with this um, this particular sketch is that it was supposed to reflect somebody of a person of interest during that time early on in the investigation in Delphi. That he, you know, he's supposed to look like a particular person that they were interested in. And unfortunately, I guess within that two year span, they caught the guy and then, you know, they looked it looked into him. And unfortunately, he did not turn out to be, you know, the actual guy. So um, I think this is just a theory and I don't know if this is true. But I think it could have been a possible, it was possible that it was Thomas Bruce just because he looks so much like him. But that's that's just a theory of mine. But so what happened is, let's just say it was Thomas Bruce. Then obviously he got arrested. I forget exactly his, um, his charges, but they're not good. And he's in jail right now or in prison. So, since he didn't work out, now they have told everybody to forget about this sketch and solely focus on this sketch. So, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, and what's so hard about um, trying to forget this sketch is... It's such a unique case where we actually have footage of the killer and he looks like this sketch. That's why it's so hard to now I'm gonna play it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just kinda see if I can do this where he's kinda like right there. And I can see the chat. Oh, Kevin says, uh, oh, let me go back to him. I just watched similarities between Delphi and Iowa. Holy crap. I know, that is interesting. It is creepy. It is absolutely insane how um, <laughs> there's so many similarities to that case. And then the dates are literally anagrams of each other. Absolutely wild. I agree. Yeah, Arctic Fox. That's a that's a good question. Um, oops. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom this in a little bit. No, uh, that'll just probably go full screen. Oh, I can a little bit. Oh. No, nope, I didn't do it. It must be had to have that full screen. Yeah, I've got the. I'm gonna play the audio as well. Just to let's uh. While this is playing, let's play the audio. Oops, wrong, wrong one. Yeah. 
So one of the reasons why it's cut up is because there is some interaction between the girls between Hey Guys and Down the Hill. And they wanted to take that out because, you know, I, I think, you know, just out of, because the girls are talking, I think that's just, un, they don't really need to have the girls talking in the, the audio. Um, let's see. Was it about hack phones, text cameras, several from the family? Was that Frank interacting with Chris? Frank, ba oh, <laughs> let's see. Um, George says he looks older in the video. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, so here's my question is, so we obviously know that there's a little bit more to the video. Um, from what I've heard, it's, you know, it's about two minutes. What I wish they would do is if there's anything that's, because clearly what they probably did is the girls had their phone, you know, Libby pulled out her phone and, um, you know, because they wanted to, you know, once they got onto the one end of the bridge, they just probably wanted to turn back and go back across the bridge. You know, they just wanted to go on one end, turn around and come back. And, you know, once they got to the end, you know, they kind of turn around and here's this guy coming along. And so Libby, um, good instincts that she had, you know, it's kind of like, mm, this is kind of sus. So she pulls out her phone. Apparently, the first part of the recording is the two girls just kind of talking, you know, like girl stuff. And then, you know, as he's approaching, he says, hey, guys. And then Abby says, hmm. And then apparently that's when he pulls out a gun and you hear the gun cock. And that's that's one of the things that they tried to take out of in between guys and down the hill is they didn't want that sound of uh, the gun cocking, from what I've heard. But I just wish that anything that she had on that phone that's visual of the BG, because clearly there would be a little bit more, because you don't see him come off the screen. So it would be nice, even if it was just like a couple more frames, could we see something on him, you know, maybe uh, a, a shoe or something that's, you know, that's, um, that could be, uh, unique to the killer that, you know, not a lot of people wear or something. You know, he could come a little bit closer. Could we recognize something? You know, is there something, is there a logo on the jacket? Could that jacket have come somewhere that's a little more unique? And could they go back and look at stuff? Let me check the chat here. Hey, what's up, Terry Crowder? Uh, Kevin Moore says, oh, 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 lost a, it is a wonder he did not grab the phone and destroy it. So the theory is, is so she's recording, you know, she's recording him for just a minute. Then she puts the phone in her pocket. And then so the rest of the audio is really just, um, you know, so there's no visual. It's just audio because it's in her pocket now. And from from Leaker, apparently they say that the phone was found close to the bodies um so apparently maybe you know when they're struggling or whatever you know it flew out and luckily he did not see it or we would clearly we would not have this footage so um what's up annette uh he says that's why i think he's older he didn't even think about phones capabilities yeah that's true that's a good way to look at it. Very good way. What's up, Cherokee Grandma? Um, so, yeah. So, I've got uh, some of the leaker um, uh, screenshots. We will go over it. Let me just take a look at um, my notes. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the, the leaker statements. So there's, there's some interesting stuff there. Delphi is such a small community. I'm almost certain if they release more footage, it would help solve this. That's how a lot of people feel, Arctic. That's how a lot of people feel. Is that just that? I feel like there could be something on his clothing that, you know, maybe we could, you know, if he just, there's a little bit more where he's closer. Could there be something that, you know, one of us in the public could recognize that maybe law enforcement, you know, may not recognize? 
Okay, let's let's get into the snapshots. Uh, where to put it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I gotta turn this down. So I've only watched this video once. Oops, I lost my head. Lost my headphones. Um, it's a good video. I just wish um, the way he put it together, he's got it like scrolling down. Um, I wish it was just stationary. Um, it kind of makes it hard to. So I'm gonna have to kind of like pause and read it out to you guys because it just kind of like scrolls down. And sometimes it's hard to know which question he actually answered. So I'll, I'll try to clear it up as much as I can. Um, for those that just tuned in, let me uh, just quickly recap. Just uh, those are just came on. So the one of the big information that we found out today is that Barbara McDonald, who was the producer of Down the Hill, had an interview with King and Klein. And this happened years ago, um, just after the murders. But she could uh, she could release it because of the investigation, and she just literally posted this like this morning. So this is only a couple hours old now. But she uh, this guy kind of asked, he's like, "I see that your five year show on Delphi airs tomorrow. Could you please tell me if you have anything that could change this case, or is this just a, a summation of how we got here?" And she says, actually airs Saturday on 8 p.m., so one day before the fifth year anniversary. Airs at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And I believe she's meant to say, like, replays Monday night. There is new information as well as a new interview people have been wanting to see. So I'm, I'm really thinking that that's going to be the interview with Keegan. Since all of his court stuff's um, coming up anyway, but we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Well, we can assume he threw out the hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff B. Idiot may have his initials on his jacket. Yeah. Who knows? There could be something on there. You know. Okay. So let's uh, now that we kind of recapped. There's some interesting stuff in this in these leaker posts, so. I had to, I had to uh, make the video quiet just because. Uh... So this is the, the poster right here. Uh, so this looks like, like he's doing it on Facebook. So he, uh, a minor change in the story, inconclusive lie detector. How closely he followed the case. His cell phone was traced to the CPS building for several hours. So that's interesting. So apparently, because we've always heard about the car at the abandoned CPS building. Apparently, one of the theories is, is that the car itself isn't his car. But he left the cell phone at the building near the car or in the car. I'm not 100% I'm not on, on, on that. But apparently, the cell phone was traced to that building. So it's it's interesting. Yeah, George, I agree. They need to release more information. Um, a lot of people feel that way that there could they could release a little bit more without really jeopardizing the uh, the case. I'm sorry, I gotta take a sip here. Okay. All right, so he's answering the question to Angela Waters. I don't know why. So like I said, some of this um, is different. So anyway, so he the leaker says, if you're a retired police officer, you know why I felt obligated to share information. You also know that I haven't shared anything that would prevent uh, a, convi a conviction. That's interesting. Okay, let's see. Let me see which one he answers, and then I'll I'll, I'll go back to the question. Let me see which uh, question he answers, and then I'll see. I don't I don't know why he did this. This is kind of makes it confusing here. Okay, so he says Lisa, 
Melissa and Helen are correct. So let's see what they just said. Oh, I didn't go back far enough. Oh, okay. So they're talking about... So this is what makes the the leaker um, kind of verified on what he knows or he or she knows is because... So this, this stuff came out over almost a year ago. And so it says suspect two could have been used for catfish to lure. So he's talking about the, I believe, um, the second sketch, which is the younger sketch, could have been used for catfish to lure. So this is this is very interesting because this is um, this stuff hadn't come out yet. Uh, Regina, wonder why there is no DNA. So they say that there is DNA, um, to be honest with you, Regina. And uh, well, I'll, I'll go over that here in just a minute because Leaker talks about it. I've seen interviews with um, Lip, uh, Kelsey German, Liberty German's sister, who's even verified that there's some kind of DNA. It's minute. So... Okay, what's up, Karen? Okay, so we're going to go, uh, go a little bit more. Okay, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to go over this. That um, You guys can see what it says, but I'm not going to read that out loud. I, I don't want to go into what happened to the girls. Okay, let me see what this question is here. Okay, so the guy says, Libby was talking to primary suspect via uh, Snapchat. So SC is Snapchat. Primary su suspect was in search party close enough to leave DNA in the vicinity of the girls. But Libby didn't know primary suspect. And Leaker replies with, let me get it all the way out here. So Leaker says, it is unknown if the individual on Snapchat was the perpetrator, but it is suspected. Unknown if the pictures sent were of a real person or a catfish. So they're talking about the the King and Klein and Anthony Schatz. So that's what I'm assuming. And we know Anthony Schatz, that was not, not the real picture. That was just a, um, yeah. That ended up being a picture of a cop who's in Alaska. <laughs> it is believed that the girls knew the primary suspect in person. It is not believed the girls knew the primary suspect in person. Excuse me. So they only knew him online. Oh, uh, how's the chat? Open minds. Hi, everyone. I can't wait to hear the new news. So, yeah, I kind of went over that. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll touch back on that in a minute. Right now I'm going over the leaker text, but I'll, I'll go back into what's what's coming out. What's up, Luna? Okay, so, oops. I hate how this guy kind of did this. I can't even read the whole post. The man either used a fake profile of a Snapchat or there was more inf one man involved. The man on the bridge is the one who was in the search party. Oh, interesting. The man on the bridge is the one who was in the search party, in my understanding. And Linker says that is correct. So apparently he was in the search party, from what they're saying. That would be very interesting. That would not surprise me. Okay. Oh. Oh my gosh, I just hit stop. I am so sorry. Oh, this is interesting right here. Did the killer take trophies? And Leaker says, a small clump of hair was removed from each girl. So, that's that's interesting. Take that for, you know, this, you have to, I'll take everything this with a grain of salt. Because, you know, we don't know. But clearly, Leaker did have some information that has been unofficially verified so but do please take all of this with 
you know, a grain of salt. This is all speculation for right now. Uh, I see in my name being, what's going on here? Sith mom, that's why they are saying the DNA was thrown out. Hmm, interesting. Uh, open minds, wasn't he all wet? Um, so apparently, from one of the witnesses, they said that they didn't see him with the jacket, uh, the blue jacket. So apparently, because obviously there would have been blood, so he took off the jacket and either ditched it or just had it like crumpled up in his hand. So... Yeah, if you guys are here, if you can, just please uh, leave a like. Um, it helps the stream get out to more people. I appreciate that. Um, oh, Danny, yes, Abby's hands were folded. Yeah, so I think this kind of goes over it. But yeah, they were... So they, they talk about signatures, you know, because, you know, some of these killers have what they call signatures on how they commit the crime. Um how they premeditate the crime, how they commit the crime, and what they leave at the scene. You know, it's all these all these three things are considered um, signatures. And there are rumors that the two guys that found the girls in the search party, um, there had been some leaked texts from them, and he said that it looked like Libby, or excuse me, Abby, had been kind of uh, placed there like a doll, kind of with her hands folded and stuff. So okay, so we're gonna go over some more of the leaker texts, um, and then I'll I'll recap on the on the news. Does the suspected perpetrator lean more toward the first sketch or second? That's an interesting question. This is more of an opinion question, so I'd rather not answer. The second sketch was based on the individual. Oops, oh, the individual that was speaking to Liberty on Snapchat. And you know what? Um, uh, Sleuth Mom has said this from the beginning. She really thinks that um, that second sketch looks like the Anthony Shots profile, and it really does. And. Uh, Remind me, Sleuth Mom. I will, I will put the two sketches up, and it is kind of interesting that they do. They definitely look alike. Definitely look a lot alike. So let's see. The primary suspect's alibi has not been disputed. Uh, Eek, I'm confused. Has not been disputed. What's the missing piece? Uh, okay, so a leaker says yes. Uh, I'm not really sure yes to what, because that was kind of... She means the primary suspect has an alibi that is holding up. And he says yes. I said, I, I wish they didn't do it like this. This kind of makes it confusing. Are either of the sketches useful? Leaker says, it is still believed that the second sketch will lead to a break in the case if that individual can be tied to the primary suspect. So, that's interesting. It's Chris. I agree. I think it's just a drawing of the Anthony Schatz picks. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it, it really does look a lot alike, which are really confusing because now you have the first sketch, which I just, if you guys been here, I kind of explained the whole reason why they don't want us looking at the first sketch. And if I get time, I'll, I'll go over that one more time. Chris, uh, Christy B., uh, who is Leaker? Um, I don't know who is exactly who Leaker is, but they've had inside information. Uh, I don't know if it's law enforcement, lawyer, uh, could be the killer. Um, do not know, but they definitely have information that's, a lot of it has kind of, they've, they've talked about information that nobody knew about and it's just barely coming out. So they definitely have a lot of inside information for sure that has been kind of slowly verified. So, okay, let's keep going here. Uh... 
how it's Okay, do you think an arrest will be made in the next year? Well, so this was a year ago, so unfortunately not. If the individual in the second sketch is not verified, it is likely that no charges will ever be brought unless more evidence is discovered or another crime is committed. So we know that's that didn't happen. Uh, suspect tells them they are trespassing and you can't let them go back across the bridge for safety reasons. They have to go down the hill. Tells them they are being arrested. The girl is asked to be released. Promise not to return. Nothing else is the scene. Oh, okay. that is interesting. Now, I've never heard this. This is very interesting. So he's talking about the recording. Now, I, I don't know if this is true, so please take this with a grain of salt. This is interesting, though. Suspect tells them they are trespassing. So he's saying as a, after they have an exchange that he tells them that they're trespassing. He can't let them go back across the bridge for safety reasons that they have to go down the hill. Tells them that they are being arrested. This could be on the longer version of stuff. Um, I don't know. That could make sense. You know, he pulls out the gun. He's saying, hey, you guys are, they're being arrested. The girl's asked to be, asked to be released and promised not to return. Nothing else is distinguishable and everything else is muffled. That, that is interesting. I have never heard that. Um, I don't know if it's true, but it, take it for what it's worth. It, it could make sense. He tried to, um, Pretend to be, uh, you know, law enforcement. That's why he tried to get them to cooperate. Um, it's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I agree. That is, that is definitely news. Uh, Christy B, where does he write these comments? Uh, this came, this is from a video. This uh, this was in Facebook. If you, if you just type in leaker, in Reddit or Facebook, it should pop up. Okay, so the original sketch was based on an incredible witness and the video of the suspect of the bri on the bridge. So he's saying from between the witness and the video on the bridge. So the sketch is a, a combination of the two. So that first sketch, the one that we always kind of refer back to because it looks like the guy on the bridge so it's it's between two you know the witness and you know the video the second sketch is based on the individual on the snapchat that liberty was speaking with based on a description by her friends that she had shown his picture to it is unknown if the individual in the second sketch is a perpetrator or a catfish and now we know it is catfish so honestly what I'm kind of getting at, what I'm kind of thinking now, is I'll either neither sketch is good. That's kind of what I'm getting. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. Because you heard me explain what happened with the first sketch. It almost makes me think that neither sketch is good now. Gina says, it's been too long with too much coverage to not have any breaks. Yeah. Yeah, coming up five-year anniversary. Uh, Yankee Heart, what was the instrument of death? Did they recover a weapon? I don't think they recovered any weapons. Um, I don't want to go into exactly what happened to them, just out of respect. Um, but you can look that up, Yankee. It's not hard to find. Um I'll, I'll, uh, at the end of this video, when I'm done, I will put this um, a link to this video if you want. Um, I think they kind of describe some of the stuff. So, okay. So this is interesting. So, what were the signatures? The only signature that could be truly distinguished was the placement of the bodies. The girls were placed in a 
tableau, taboo towards each other. I will not go into further details out of respect for the family. So, so yeah, the bodies were placed. Um, we know that, or we don't know, but in other rumors of the guys that found the girls, they said that it looked like they'd been kind of posed. So, oh, you're welcome, Yankee. I think he has done this before. How many other girls have gone missing in the area since then? Otherwise, he could have been a passerby, but a passerby wouldn't nece necessarily know about the bridge. Yeah, Ashley, I, I definitely think it's more than likely a local because that area, you know, from what people in the town say, because a lot of, you know, they've been interviewed numerous times, they say that it's not a place that's just, you know, it's, it's kind of off the beaten path, the Monon High Bridge is. So it's it's more known to the locals than, you know, outsiders. Oops. Uh, so I wish I could have seen the question. To my knowledge, Ron Logo... Uh, I can't talk, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me take a sip, apologize. To my knowledge, Ron Logan was the only individual that refused a polygraph in the immediate days following the discovery of the bodies. Several individuals that were interviewed requested that they speak to lawyers prior to a polygraph. Interesting. And I, I don't think Ron Logan had anything to do with it. And um, Ron Logan is the guy who owned the property that the bodies were found on. So... And unfortunately, he passed away, too, so. Um, let's see. Arctic says, Kendall Ray interviewed family members, family members, and apparently the authorities are being pretty hush-hush with them as to what they know as well. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. We're about halfway through here. Um, several were inconclusive, unfortunately. I'm sure you're aware that the main intention of polygraphs is to catch the individual in a known lie, which is hopefully leads to a confession. I will mention that one of the inconclusive results was of Tobes, which coupled with the handcuffs is why he was interviewed several times. He has since been completely ruled out. Yeah. So he was a person of interest, but has been, um, yeah, there's a little bit more. He has since been completely ruled out as a suspect with a proven alibi, not based on individual testimony. So what that means is that he's, there's other people that can, um, corroborate his story and his alibi has checked out. So, okay, so the search was called off due to safety concerns. I pity those who made that de that decision because they have expressed extreme regret. In hindsight, law enforcement should have cordoned off, cordoned off the area from the beginning and only allowed trained individuals access. So I wonder that maybe there would have been some kind of uh, contamination going on, if that's what he's kind of talking about. It's interesting. So let me check. Well, I wish Leaker could get the rest of the video. Yeah. Okay. What's up, everybody? Those that are just tuning in, we are going over uh, some of the leaker texts that came out about a year ago, I believe. It's been a while. Um, and they definitely have some inside information. I do not know who leaker is, but a lot of stuff that they had um, said back then as people didn't know about and has actually just barely been coming out. So a lot of this stuff has been kind of semi-verified. But I, in no way I'm, uh, on my channel do I say this is uh, legit. You know, this is, for right now, this is purely speculation. I have to say that on my channel. But, <clears throat> and then um, 
there's some, and I'll, I'll finish this video uh, just for those who are tuned in or kind of wondering what the big news is, is that Barbara McDonald, the producer of Down the Hill podcast, had an interview with Keegan two years ago, basically right after, or not two years ago, I think it was longer than that, um, had an interview with Keegan Klein way before anybody knew about Keegan. But she couldn't release that interview because of the open investigation. But she, uh, this morning, was um, asked about, you know, what are you guys doing for the fifth year anniversary? Is there going to be any kind of new information? And she actually replied, and I'll, I'll show the text after this. She said that, yes, there is new information coming out. Also, a new interview that people were uh, interested in. So... That's very, it's very exciting, and that's going to happen this Saturday at uh, 8 p.m. and 11 Eastern. Oh, thank you, Sue. So, okay, so uh, let's finish. Uh, there's some more stuff here. Okay, so. They believed more audio would lead to a suspicion of law enforcement initially. I think the main reason is they have a primary suspect and do not believe releasing any further information would be helpful. Um, so apparently now we know that um, we could use probably some more um, audio. I think they should release something, even if just the rest of the video that shows him in the frames. Because I was talking about it earlier, you know, what if we could kind of make out uh, a certain shoe that he's wearing, you know, that might be more unique to him or something that's on the jacket that, you know, uh, what's up, Sophira? So let me check. Yes, we need to hear more. Yep. Uh, blind, blind squirrel speculation is John Weaver is the leaker. Okay. Oh, John Weaver. Yes. Yeah, I've been um I don't know a lot about John Weaver. I've heard of him. Yeah, he's uh I said I don't know a lot about him, but there's been some speculation that he was um I know he's been checked out, so that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, 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 I could pause it. So there are no, <clears throat> excuse me, there are currently no witnesses that place his car at the CPS building. His cell phone was pinged to that area over the course of several hours. Law enforcement suspects he parked there during the harm, during the homicides. So that's interesting. So not only is there a, a suspicious car over at that uh, CPS building, but they had also pinged a phone over there. So. <clears throat> Christy, why did she do an interview with Keegan? So Keegan got um, arrested. Oh, I'd have to look at the date. We're talking a week after the Delphi case because um, of the stuff he was into. I'd, I'd have to go look at that. Look at the dates. So don't don't quote me on that. I'll look into it. But uh, they've always kind of felt like Keegan, you know, um, has would lead to the bridge guy. That's that's one of the avenues anyway. So yet yeah, his phone ping there is he. Home close enough to explain that. If his alibi were accurate, his phone should not have pinged in that location. So they're talking about someone's alibi, but I do not know who they're exactly talking about. Uh, so is his alibi far enough away? It should have not been anywhere near the vicinity or something. Then how does he explain his phone ping in there? That's so weird. So apparently maybe somebody that they were looking into had an alibi to, um, I don't know. That I'm not sure that fully makes sense there. So 
So apparently I didn't explain this clearly enough. Cell phones ping to further towers in rural rural areas all the time. Without placing him or his car at the scene, the pings themselves. Oh, see, I don't know how whoever put this video together. I'm glad, you know, I appreciate it. But the way they did it, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't finish that. Uh, without placing him or his car at the scene, pings himself would not be admissible. It is very unlikely that his phone would have pinged that far away. Okay, so Laker says, I'm exhausted. I'm going to continue for now, but please be understanding if I stop answering. To the admission of this group, thank you for the opportunity to shed a little more light. To those of you that did not believe me or question my motives, I suspect the information I provided will be validated in the coming days. And I'm sorry if you disagree with me doing this. To those of you that believed me, thank you. For your trust. Did the suspect plant the clothes in Libby's shoes? It is not believed that they were planted. So I think they found one of the shoes on the other side of the, the river or the creek. So I think that's kind of what they're talking about. Wondering if the shoe was planted. I think it just fell off because they were going down those hills and maybe... Maybe she tried to run and it slipped off. Uh, everything is going good. Yeah, but who is Weaver? Yeah, I need to go in. I need to do more research before I feel comfortable talking about John Weaver. Because when you look up John Weaver, there's about like 50 of them. Like apparently, John Weaver is a popular name. And so I, I got to research him some more. But I'll be more than happy to look into him for sure. Robert says, could it be possible that both suspect picks could be father and son? Um, oh, are you talking about the sketches? Um, I would say now I don't believe that. Um, just because, uh, just kind of what I've gone over today. Um, the first sketch was originally looked to look like one guy and that guy ended up turning out not to be the suspect. And so that's why they ditched, told everybody to forget the first sketch and look at the younger sketch. And now they believe that the younger sketch was more, could be, uh, the sketch of the Snapchat account, which we know the Snapchat account is a catfish account. So technically... From what I'm getting at is it almost seems like both sketches are really irrelevant. Now that's my speculation. But that's kind of where that's kind of leading me to. So nobody in your family is currently a suspect. The information that's been submitted by you has been looked into in the past and is being revisited upon your recent. Um, say, I don't know the question that he, that this person asked. So oh yeah, I, I know Christy. Yeah, that's Keegan Klein and uh, his father. If that's what you guys are talking about. I guess, is that what you're talking about, Christy? Is Keegan and uh, Tony Klein? So it's mom. That was the guy who was saying that his dad did it on YouTube. Oh, okay. That's what, okay. I guess what you're saying. What was the instrument of, oh, well, here's your question right here. So I didn't mean to show that, but I didn't know they were going to play that twice. So. As you can see, they believe a knife or a blunt force object was used. I didn't want to show that, but I didn't know that would come up a second time. Was BG in the area when the girls were found? Interesting. I do not feel comfortable answering this. My apologies. But 
honestly, he did answer that earlier when he said that he believed that they were in the search party. So, from what Leaker said earlier, or I'm not sure if he posted this and they answer, answered it later, I don't know how these questions are being shown, so they're kind of out of complete context. Has the suspect lawyered up and cooperated with in interviews? Primary suspect has cooperated. Interesting. Okay, I don't want to show that. You say primary suspect. Is there other viable suspects? Anybody that doesn't have a confirmed alibi is considered to be a viable suspect. I wish I could lie to you and tell you that law enforcement was more sure. Anybody that doesn't have a confirmed alibi is considered to be a viable suspect. I would, oh, okay. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just went over that. I'm sorry. Is suspect related to either girl? No. Was he part of the search on the 13th and the 14th or just the 13th or just the 14th? Um, and he says, I do not feel comfortable answering this question. So what Kyra was saying is, you know, were you part of the initial search on the 13th when they went missing or when they were found on the 14th? But I mean, if he doesn't feel comfortable answering the question, it's almost wouldn't that almost be a mission of yes, you know. What's up, Shorty? OK, so we're almost uh, done. What was the mistake that law enforcement said the suspect made? Laker says, I think this was being used as a tactic to scare the perpetrator. Which makes sense. The only known mistake was allowing himself to be recorded unless you're referring to something I'm not aware of. So... Yeah, I think that's kind of a, a, a tactic for sure to kind of scare... Um, the perpetrator into thinking, oh, well, you messed up. We know who it is. We know who you are. You might as well just come forward. We're going to find out. Um, it makes sense to do that. Doubts how. I cannot reveal... That information without narrowing down the suspects, I'm sure this response will likely lead to somebody figuring it out, though. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. What's up, Emo Jim? Hey, it's been a while since I've seen you on my show. What's up, buddy? Okay. Was that was that leaker right there? Yeah, so the Snapchat conversations ceased in the days prior. Ceased in the days prior. It is believed all efforts to identify an individual from Snapchat have been exhausted. The phone was believed to have been left in the vehicle by the perpetrator during the homicides. So I think what he's saying is, is that it's a possibility that the perpetrator was Snapchatting or saw the Snapchat, could even con um, had contact with the two girls, and he was at the CPS building. This is just speculation. 
So, you know, he's like, oh, okay, I see they're on Snapchat, they're communicating, you know, and then he leaves his phone in the car, and then, you know, he knows the girls are there, and he goes and then meets up with them, of course. That, that could make sense, part of it. Uh, so they're just going to wrap things up. Oh, oh, I just got a notification. Good to see you again. Great work, dude. Thanks so much, Unimo Jam. That's awesome, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I'm taking, uh, 35% of all donations and super chats and I am donating them to the Humane Society. Let me just bring that down real quick. Um, so we've already had two donations today. Uh, so right now we are at $42. It's a start. I just started doing this. So, um, but we've had two donations since. So yeah, like I said, do 35%. Um, if you're new to the channel, I, uh, I do big stories and then a way to get back is I feature currently missing people. I show their missing person posters and on top of that, I figured, because uh, I'm a huge animal lover, to get back to the animals, um, is uh, Humane Society of Utah, because that's where I live. Um, I'll do that every three months, and we'll do it like a live show where we turn in the donations. Um, this time I'll do the Humane Society of Utah, and then I think next, excuse me, Next time I'll do like the, the National Humane Society. So so thanks so much, Evo. That's awesome, buddy. That really helps out. Okay, we're almost done here. Okay, this is interesting. This is an interesting question. Has BG killed before? This was believed to be his first time. So this is this is a question I have. Is I wonder if it's a hunter that at some point, you know, killing a deer or whatever just wasn't enough anymore. And, you know, he wanted to move on to, you know, something else. Have a check. And it will help Chris buy a permanent home. Um, yep, thanks. Uh, nice live, great room, great info. Yeah, yeah. this is, uh, I'm in a hotel. Uh, I'll be heading back to Salt Lake. <laughs> okay, let me clear that. True, Dana. That is true. I don't think anyone could say it's... His first time until we know who the killer is. That's true. For sure. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking, George. The most dangerous game. That's what I was thinking. Would the primary suspect have known the girls not believed to? And I think he's asking, Sean is asking that as in personally. Were the girls killed where they were found? The bodies were moved. The bodies were only moved in the immediate vicinity of the murder. So maybe is that to position them or something? Unknown, but it is believed that this was his first. It's probable. So I'm, I'm assuming that this question is, is, is this their first time? Does Oops, let me pause it. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Let me go back to the question. Does the law enforcement suspect that the suspect has committed other similar crimes, either before or after this one? If so, in what states? So one of the reasons why they think it's his only one is because they... Apparently they have some DNA and that he's not in the database and that's why they can't um, figure out who it is. 
Are they close to breaking the case? Is that why they're starting to release information? I'm not here in any official capacity. Um, so he's just basically saying, no, I'm not part of the investigation. Christy tried to take a look at the sketches, client's father, but the other way around. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look it up one more time, Christy. Give me a second. We'll we'll look at it, and then I'll, I'll explain what I think, and I'll, I'll take a look at what you're saying. Uh, oops, I do not want to show that. I do not want to show that. Uh, primary suspect was known to visit the area. No, to visit. I thought you stated the primary sect resided in Delphi. So, Leaker saying the primary suspect. So, I think what he's saying, Leaker is saying, is the person they suspect is known to visit the area, but still could mean that he's a resident. There is no indication that the killer was harmed. That's interesting. I've heard that Libby had gotten scratched him, and that could be possible where they got the DNA, is that she kind of fought. Uh, unknown suspe suspected that she may have communicated her intentions to visit the bridge in the days prior. So I'm assuming the question is, is that... Uh, did she have any kind of communication with the suspect previous to this? I would assume the search on Logan's property was based on the girls being found on it and Ron lied about his alibi. Ron Logan was searched based on his property and initial unwillingness to take a polygraph, but he's been cleared. Ron Logan's been looked into. He's... I don't think, and he's he's passed on now. I don't think it was Ron Logan. I think that would be kind of dumb for you to, you know, kill in your own backyard because that was his property. So I, you, you know. Was there a note left behind? There was no note. Okay, we're almost done here. Did the suspect have ties to the Packers meat processing plant nearby? No. Interesting. Has the suspect or family deleted any incriminating posts from Facebook since being questioned? Unknown. All right, so I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me and going through all that. That's awesome. Oh, emo, buddy. All right, I appreciate it, buddy. More for the animals. I appreciate that, bud. That's awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Emo Jim. That's that's awesome. So, uh, sweet. Uh, let me. T I'm just taking a look at the chat. Um, oh, let me. Uh, so I got Emo Jim up here. I got your chat. Let's see if that popped up right. Click on it one more time. Sometimes this uh not working. Sorry guys, I'm trying to sometimes my uh my thing um uh, where your comments where I highlight them, sometimes they freeze up and they uh they don't pop up like they're supposed to. Yeah, uh, make sure that's working alright. Okay, cool. It is. 
Right on, guys. We've got 107 people in here. That's awesome. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we're just about done. For those that just came in late, I will go over the big information, just in case if you hadn't heard. So, Barbara McDonald, she is the producer of Down the Hill Podcast. Um, check out the podcast. It's really great. She had posted this earlier this morning. On Reddit, somebody asked them. So they said, I see that your five-year show on Delphi airs tomorrow. Because uh, five years, it'll be the fifth-year anniversary of the Delphi murders on Sunday, which is the 13th. And so he asked, can you please tell me if anything, if you have something that could change the case? Or is this just a summation of how we got here? And so... Barbara said, yes, actually airs Saturday at 8 p.m., which is the day before, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and again once at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I think Smith put replays, replays Monday night. There is new information as well as a new interview people have been wanting to see. So I think that's huge. That is huge. Not only new information, but a new interview. And people have talked about and she's even I believe she's even talked about um that she kind of had a one-on-one -on -one with Keegan so um a lot of people are believe that this interview is going to be with Keegan <clears throat> excuse me I got a dry throat thank you Jill great live great to see you yes thank you so much <clears throat> I know Dana it doesn't seem like it's all been five years I agree it's gone that's creep. Yeah, it's gone by so fast. I'm sure I'm a, but I'm. Uh, I can't talk. <clears throat> but I bet for the family that it's just dragged on, and I'm sure they want to get this uh, over with and solved. All right, I will go over the sketches one more time because Christy B had brought it up. Um, Yeah, let me show the missing one more time. Thank you, Sleuth. Sleuth has been working with me. Um, we've been kind of helping each other out. Um, I'm going to post her um, a link to her channel. She's been very great. She's been very helpful. Uh, she's been helping me out. been kind of helping her out. And um, so here's a link to her channel. Go check her out. Subscribe. She is awesome. Does great work. She shows the missing. She's kind of a more focuses on the kids that go missing that really don't get the attention. Um, just because it's just kind of way it ha way it goes. Uh, Aunt Denny says, "Do you know if they've done a familiar DNA?" I don't know exactly. I will look that up, Aunt Denny. I know that there's been some talk about that, and I don't know exactly what to say because um it's kind of i'll have to look that up for sure though and i'll, I'll get back to you on that one definitely because i know there was some talk about looking up ancestry and stuff but I'll, i'll have to look at the interviews again so good question so this is Bre uh this is leah brandon um uh, went missing 10 days ago she's 17 brown eyes long brown hair She just went missing uh, from Lolling, Texas. Here's a oh, where's her picture. There's a little better picture of her. Looks like she's a nurse. So anybody uh, that's in around that area, please take a close look. She just went missing. So, All right, let's go over, just before I go, let's go over the sketches one more time. So um, I'm going to explain them the way that I know. And then, Christy, I will, I will put the side-by-sides up real quick. So from what I know, from what I understand, is so this is the first of the sketch. This is the first sketch that came out. This, was, this sketch came from a witness and Luling. Oh, Luling. Okay, thank you, guys. You guys know I, I butcher names, so... Luling. Thank you, guys. Luling, Texas. Okay. Not Loling. Luling. Awesome. So the first sketch is a combination of a witness and 
the actual bridge guy video. That's why he looks like bridge guy. But he was made to really look like a particular person that they were interested uh, that was kind of a person of interest at that time in the beginning of the investigation. But unfortunately, that person didn't pan out. Now, I don't know if it was Thomas Bruce. My theory is it could be because it looks a lot like him and my, you know, it's kind of got the same. But unfortunately, um, Thomas Bruce has been arrested and he had an alibi that checked out and so it wasn't him. So you get two years down the road, they say, no, forget this sketch and focus on this sketch now. But now from what we are learning from the information is it looks like this sketch was supposed to resemble the Anthony Schatz account. And Anthony Schatz's account does look a lot like um, that sketch. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture right now. So let me pull that up. And then I will do a side-by-side -side for... Actually, I should just look up the, uh, the model's name. So let's see. What's uh, a good one? His head wasn't turned. Yeah, I gotta have an appropriate picture here. Let's take this. Oh, come on. Uh oh, did my camera turn off? Gosh. Oh, I hope I didn't lose my camera. No. Okay. All right. Let's take a peek here. Oh, I'm still here. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Let's just take a quick peek at it. Pull up my paint 3D. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, put up Keegan. Fortunately, I have a picture of his father at the moment. So there's Keegan. Christy, put in the chat if you want me to do the younger picture with the father or the son. So I know which one you want me to do. And let's do him. Well, I'll just do him for right now. I guess I should have gotten a better picture with his mouth kind of not open, but he's kind of got his head to the side. I mean, it kind of does with the hair and stuff. Yeah, I wish I would have kind of, if I, usually I like to get this stuff all together in the beginning, but there's a picture on the internet with Keegan Father side by side. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, where they're at the, uh, they're at in Vegas, I think. They're standing in front of the dam. Yeah, this one here. Sorry, my phone's going off. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. It's kind of a faded picture of them. Yeah, here's the picture. Ugh. Never, never save a picture anymore. Got to screenshot everything now. 
So the only thing is, is I'm going to be honest with you, Christy, is I know that these guys are pretty tall from what we've looked at. And bridge guy, um, cause they, they did some height comparisons and kind of narrowed down what they think the height of BG is. And they think it's more towards five, eight, give or take a couple inches. So that's, um, I don't know. There is them. I guess I'd have to blow up the face. Yeah, this is something I'd usually do when I'm setting up a stream. Is but this is the best I can do for now, just quickly. So I'm not sure which one. So you're talking about him going with him, and then the older one for. Uh, I should have put the pictures in the middle. Um. Do that one more time. Just one more time. And put them in the middle here. Pull them up just a little bit. About right there. Okay. Make it a little smaller. Oh. Yeah, I don't. That's a big sketch. I would say out of the two, maybe the father could be, maybe, but um from what people say in Keegan, um, I'm, unfortunately, you know, he's just a little uh, more heavy set and don't fit the uh, the body of him. But that, if that's what you're asking, oh, the other way around. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you think him looks? Yeah. I'll do it one more time. I, I don't think there's just... Um, be Other way around. Yeah, the nose a little bit for sure. There we go. There we go. You guys can see that okay. Let me make sure my head's not in the way here. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get it. You got the facial hair in the one, and then he's clean shaven. I, I could see that for sure. But I, I I just don't think so. But it is interesting because, yeah, you got the facial hair with the sun. And, yeah, you got him clean shaven there with the short hair. He's wearing the hat. It is interesting. But I don't think so. But well, we'll find out more information, you know, this uh, this Saturday. That's that's the big thing. So, um, so I'm excited for that. Uh, Mark A. David, hi, mind shocked. Uh, did I see what else we got in here? So anyway, I've got a couple of emojis that I need to make. Do you guys have any um, ideas? Uh, before I get off, um, I've got f I got four new emojis. Oh, I just made a new one actually. Um, it is the Humane Society. So whenever anybody uh, donates, you know, please spam the uh, the Humane Society because uh, those donations, part of that's going to go to them. So, <clears throat> but uh, maybe I'll do like a community poll or something. You guys got some ideas of. Uh, um, what we could do for some uh, some emojis so we can have fun in the chat. So um, I'm going to go live tonight and I'm going to do part of my Paranormal Tuesday that I missed yesterday just because my PC was um, not working. 
So I couldn't do it. I'm just looking at the chat here. Stress can cause weight gain. Yeah, um, apparently he's been kind of that weight uh, most of his life from what um, people that are close to him. So, but who knows? But, uh... Let's see. Yeah, Melissa, I am. I am. Well, no, I'm in St. George, but I will be going back tomorrow. I was supposed to go back today, but I stayed one more day because they offered me a deal since I've been staying at the hotel so much. Leak text and Delphi case. Okay, Gretchen. All right. Awesome. So, but, uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there, guys. Um, so I can get prepared for tonight's show. So I'm going to do, uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, some stories. We've got the story that's the boy uh, found in the chimney. The girl that was found inside a tree. <laughs> so we got a boy in the chimney and a woman found in, inside of a tree. Like it grew around her, basically. And yeah, so that's going to be the stories for tonight. So... Yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Emo Jim, um, everybody, Anthony, everybody that donated. Um, just uh, just tuning in, and um, uh, I appreciate it. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to talk about that off stream, Melissa. Unfortunately, it's she's just having a tough time right now. So, all right, guys. We will see you tonight. Thank you so much. Please leave a like. Please go check out Sleuth Mom's channel. All right. Love you guys.